pick any gun in Fallout New Vegas and the odds are good that you'll find a couple different types of bullets that'll work with it. But there's one ammo type that serves absolutely no purpose. Using it will only make your life worse. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only beanbag rounds? Guns will be the primary skill to focus on. Beanbag rounds, by definition, cannot be lethal, which means pumping up my gun skill can't hurt anyone. Your skill with a firearm is derived from your agility and luck. Every gymnast knows that. Intelligence will help with the learning of the shotgun. The ability to speak won't matter in a few minutes, so charisma is a dump. And for my skills, I chose guns, barter, and here comes the oddball, speech. I'm not talking my way out of anything, but there's one specific skill check that needs a 20 in speech to pass. Traits are weird. I wanted to pick gifted and one of the skilled traits to see what the combination of effects would be with them both. In the 10 or so seconds I tried to think through what might happen, I made negative progress. Then I thought maybe take trigger discipline and steady aim pro to spice up the gunplay a little. I eventually settled on skilled, duh, and bloody mess, got off the couch, and set foot outside for the first time. You saw this coming three years away. I need beanbag rounds before I can do anything resembling a beanbag only playthrough. Chat didn't stock any in stock, and there aren't a ton of places to find them. The Fallout Wiki doesn't have a list of locations for finding beanbag rounds like it does for most weapons and ammo types, and Ned's Declassified Wasteland Survival Guide only mentions them one time. I was in uncharted territory, with nowhere else to turn. The Gunrunners seem like the safest choice. This is standard pacifist stuff, I'll skim through it. What you're gonna wanna do is pass through Hidden Valley. Try to lure the baby rad scorpions to Black Mountain. Avoid the death claws by cuddling with the mountain. Discover Repcon. Arrive at Camp McCarran just in time to instigate a conflict. And find my brother trapped behind the glass. If he's in a good mood or God is smiling on your wallet, he'll have at least a few beanbags back there with him. This time he had 19, which cost me 76 currency. Before testing the usefulness of my beans, I wanted more. Every gun does an amount of damage that can be modified by skills, chems, armor, perks, ammo type, and probably other stuff I'm leaving out. For example, a 9mm pistol does, let's say, 25 damage with normal bullets. Hollow points might make it do 25% more damage against unarmed targets, and 75% against those in armor. Beanbags take that concept and kick its f***ing teeth in. Beanbag rounds make your gun do 5% the damage it usually would. Fractions are tough. If you're still confused, I get it. Worry not. The consequences of beanbags existing will be felt soon enough. Because I had no idea who could have beanbags and who couldn't, I relied solely on the Vendatron to restock. Wait a couple days in a different location for him to restock, buy 16 more, then do it again. Farmer Paul knows all about the raising and killing of vegetables. I raised 30,000 of them in my Discord server. And I just explained how I can easily get as much ammo as I need as long as I have the caps to afford it. But we live in the future now. Instant gratification is not enough. Instead of spending time, and more importantly money, on 12 gauge beanbag rounds, I upped the price from 4 caps each to 12 caps per beanbag and pulled the beautiful plastic scarf out of the universe's throat. My funds allowed me to buy another 75 beanie bag rounds. I tossed all my caps into the fountain and realized when I went to test out my shells that I didn't have a gun. Thankfully, the Walmart had a cheap one I could afford even if it wasn't an official gun. Now, after all that work to get the bean bags, how are they? Remember, they do 250 fatigue damage, but 5% regular real damage, as described by Fallout New Vegas itself. Every creature with a soul has a fatigue score that can be determined by their base fatigue value, which varies from creature to creature. The level and endurance of each creature can affect its fatigue score too. The boxing gloves deal 35 fatigue damage per hit and were perfectly viable weapons in the right hand. As for the American version of fatigue weapons, get up close to ensure all the little baby beans connect and you've got an instant KO machine when you're sleeping, because only in your f***ing dreams does that happen. Bean bags don't deal fatigue damage. It's possible that one of the three dozen mods I installed broke it, but where we're going, we don't need fatigue damage. A Brahmin willing to stand up to me was the only creature I ever knocked out because the sluggish speed of the shotgun combined with the practically non-existent damage ensures a life of pain. If you came to this video from Twitter, you might have seen me describe what I did in this challenge as something along the lines of, I tore the Mojave Wasteland to shreds, burned the remains, rolled the ashes into a snowman, and kicked its f***ing head off. And that's accurate. The essence that makes up every Can You Beat Fallout New Vegas video going forward has changed. 
there's an exploit that lets you use any ammo type with any weapon and it's easy to pull off with a controller. How I always did it going all the way back to 6 hours ago when I did this was equip any 12 gauge shotgun and hotkey it to any key. While holding the right bumper, use the analog stick to move over to the ammo tab and hotkey the beanbag rounds to any key. Now equip the gun, press the key you hotkeyed the shotgun shells to, and now you're using beanbag rounds in a handgun or a plasma rifle. If it could hold bullets, now it holds beans. Unfortunately, being able to use any weapon doesn't change much of anything. I'm still only doing 5% normal damage. However, the snowman hasn't even taken shape yet. The prophecy says a certain series of events must unfold a certain way in which they've never unfolded before. Ringo's death will kick all this off in a spectacular fashion. In any other video, with any other weapon, Ringo would have been dead in seconds. Part 1 of the problem was me expecting to go all in on guns. Plasma beans require a gentleman's touch to work properly, and my fingers are far too delicate for that kind of precision work. It became clear long ago that normal weapons won't be powerful enough to give me a fighting chance. It all comes back to money. There are methods to get your hands on some cheese when you're in a pinch. The scavenging of dead supplies from sad little cows on the side of the road are always a popular choice among the youth of today. And I had some decisions to make. Which gun to buy? Mental math proved to me that I had about 1600 caps to play with. Not a lot of wiggle room what with the runner guns being fat and out of shape. The me browsing the shop still didn't fully understand anything, so he chose a 5.56 pistol for bonus critical hit damage and a silenced pistol. The sneak attack bonuses always do insane damage and let me attack from the safety of a shadow. The silenced pistol became worthless almost immediately. Sneak attacks serve no purpose. I've got a gun with bonus critical shot damage, luck of 9, my gun skill is over 50, the game set to very easy, and 105 bullets were not enough to kill Ringo. It took those 105 mistakes to learn me that drugs were needed to take down Ringo. I activated my CSGO aimbot and ended Ringo with only about 75 beanbags. You get it now, right? The only logical conclusion to this story. Yeah, you got it. Back to the setup of my master plan. I talked to Joe Cobb about taking over Good Springs and started moving all the pieces into position. Each of the powder gangers loitering outside the town has a role to play. Like a chessboard, each piece needs to be about 6 feet south, 6 feet under the earth. So uh, that powder ganger's gone now, I never found the blue guy again. You see, I need them all to go away, but my inner weaknesses prevent me from killing them and I can't go ask them to leave because I can't. That left the wilderness as my failsafe. Push them out into Rad Scorpion territory and they'll get torn to shreds in no time. Or you get one person one fifth of the way there, give up after they go overboard and get lost at sea, try to drag the puppies back to town, they're not interested, and move on to bigger, grander ideas. How about an anti-material beanbag rifle? Rather than reloading an old save, from a simpler time, I entered Repcon in search of a briefcase full of money. It's all the way up on the second floor, and someone doesn't have the pipes to blow the door down, though not for a lack of trying. I was about halfway through the door when the robot told me to get the f out of here. One way or another, the anti-material rifle will be mine. I was willing to sell everything I had to get it, except old Painless. She's been with me ever since I took care of Ringo outside of Vault 101 all those years ago. I hit the strip, leveled up twice inside the tops, put the points into guns and barter, both were mistakes, borrowed 11,000 caps from the casino, and went to cash in my tickets. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time on anything stupid. I broke out the big guns, you got your 1911 beanbag, of course the anti-material beanbag, and then there's the mother of all beanbags, the portable nuclear beanbag launcher. I'm done with that joke now. Unwilling to use the fat man in anything other than the most dire of circumstances, I bought the anti-material rifle and a few others, squatted down real low, and hatched the next phase of my plan. I'm god now, but even gods have their limits. I want to crush the economy beneath me. I want to turn Wall Street into Paul Street. The anti-material rifle is one of the most powerful guns in New Vegas, and with beanbag rounds loaded into it, it does 5 damage per shot. 5. As a reference, the regular BB gun does 4 damage per shot. Now that my grand plan is on hold again, I can explain what that plan was. There's an exploit in New Vegas that lets you get infinite experience. You talk to Joe Cobb about taking over town, kill Ringo, tell Cobb you'll ask around for supplies, kill his friends before you talk to Chet, and supposedly you can repeat the skill check with Chet for endless supplies and experience. That never worked. I'm at Boulder City now, trying to change things for the better. 
For instance, I bribed Officer Lieutenant into letting me get the great cons to release the hostages. Jessup tossed me Benny's lighter, which is great because having a lighter beanbag will come in handy. I followed Jessup to see where he goes. It got a little spooky when God turned off the nightlight, and from what I could tell, Jessup just went back to Red Rock to coronate himself as the new sheriff. I didn't head all the way out there only discovered a close location for later, and returned to the Gunrunners as the younger and much more full of life mitten squad. Finally bought the Fat Man Tactical Nuclear Beanbag Launcher, and saw that with a beanbag, it does 12 damage per shot. It doesn't explode though. Other videos of people using this ammo exploit to get the Fat Man work, but what I've got is really what I've wanted all along. One of those giant f***ing air cannons, but air doesn't grow on trees, it's expensive. I did the old console command trick to get rid of the weapons and ammo I had in exchange for 390 bean bags and tested the fat man on the powder gangers who are still waiting outside Good Springs. Two headshots with a fat man on very easy to kill a powder ganger. Couldn't tell you about Cobb. Sneak attacks do work, they're just not very quiet. My last option for becoming God has failed. Before abandoning the ship altogether, I wanted to see if the exploit would work at all. It didn't, but I've got a feeling that blue guy I lost with the coyotes was screwing with my reception. From there, it was back to the tops to put my gun to work, to see how it handles itself in a firefight, to see if there was any possible way for beanbag rounds to be useful. And surprisingly, I achieved what I set out to do. I used beanbag rounds to blow the tops down, with the help of a few little hypodermic friends. Steady increases hip fire accuracy substantially, which gives you a fight chance against chairman. Once you start going up against someone wearing any kind of armor, that's when it's gonna get rough. I spoke to Yes Man briefly, don't worry, his role in this video is already over. Hit level 6, dumped all the points into explosives, thinking it would help the fat man, picked adrenaline rush as a perk, yes it did come from a mod, introduced myself to Mr. House to reap the rewards of being a mailman, and loaded a couple bean bags into the bino clears to see if anything would happen. That's where this entire idea was born. I was told about this ammo glitch and wanted to see if it would make the bino clears a usable weapon, which it didn't. While I was up in the Lucky 38, I made the mistake of taking care of Mr. House, left the strip for Cottonwood Cove, used my mighty wind to knock an ant on its ass, barely survived the ant hill, and experienced a realistic death. I was walking around, minding my own business, a grenade goes off behind me, then my skull's in the dirt. Malcolm Holmes let me know how dangerous the world is about 4 seconds after I killed a snake with a hacky sack. Malcolm ate shit for that. I continued towards Caesar and died looking into my lover's arms. It might feel like everything's moving a little too quick, but I can assure you it only appears to look that way because that's what's happening. Cazadors are quick little f***ers and one dose of anti-venom only goes so far when you stick your entire pelvis into a glory nest. I only got away by running backwards and firing the air cannon in the opposite direction to get a speed boost. Almost got to catch my breath by the time I was on fire. I ran to Nelson for help. The gecko that followed me to the camp went straight for the decorations. Inside a cave, I untied two NCR hostages, but left them locked in their cages. Their superior officer thanked me for releasing them anyway because I technically did as instructed. Entered the free cam to get a screenshot, and when I came to again, I was playing in second person. I've either seen this done before on another channel, or it happened to me in a dream I had. I told the river man I was ready to head down the river, and he took me down to the river. Getting there took all day. Met Caesar, destroyed the generators down in the Lucky 39's basement, then I thought maybe I'd tear that tiara off Caesar's head. Fortunately for me, I wasn't able to f*** things up for future me by succeeding in assassinating a world leader. I settled for giving him the international symbol of I'll turn you into a hand puppet, and went on to find better things to think about. At the right now, the Caesar wants me to assimilate the boomers into my generation or find some other means of communicating with them. But I can't do that. It's time to take this to the next level. I did this playthrough in two days, and it was on day two I remembered the only gun capable of more greatness than the Fat Man, Euclid's Sea Finder. There's the Alien Blaster too, but the only gimmick that thing's got going for it is every shot is critical. If you can remember back to your second grade chemistry textbook for the advanced first grader, Euclid's Sea Finder is a unique weapon that can only be obtained after completing the Lucky Old Sun quest a certain way. That quest is started at Helios 1, and Helios 1 is guarded by a hideous monster. It's not her grotesque appearance that makes her a monster, she's weak, that's why she's a monster. I pulled the old I have a brother prank on her because to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if I have a brother or not. I don't know where the joke ends and reality begins. After pulling off such a heist, I slipped into something more comfortable, entered the station, started the quest with Fantastic, and told Ignacio to f*** back, because in case you missed it, I'm working with the Legion. 
I also hacked into the first terminal, but couldn't get into the second. That's when Ignacio took a bit of a tumble. Inside the tower, the machine turrets cut me down over and over and over again, forcing me to use my science against them. The last obstacle was the door. Some people say that the door was man's first foe and will be his last. I'm not sure if anyone besides me has ever said that, but now it's a thing that's been said. The secondary door was locked too, so I cheesed my way through it by quick saving and quick loading through it. Picked up the Poseidon keycard, the robot turned on the generator, I rerouted the power to the Archimedes II weapon system, and opened the door to the rest of my life. This is a big moment. That's why it had to be perfect down to the last detail. The weather now sucks. A sunset is much more pleasant to the eye. Except, you know, this is a solar weapon that needs a sun that hasn't set yet to function. I sat there for about a minute in awe of what I tried to do before doing what had to be done. In my moment of triumph, this friend of Malcolm Homeless tried to conversate me. Here I am having just convinced the sun that mood rings are legit, and this bitch is out here playing with bottle caps. She's an acrobat now. As for me, I gave this kid a thousand bucks for his 15 pound toy gun, loaded my orbital laser death ray with beanbag rounds, and returned to Good Springs for the final time to wipe Joe Cobb off the face of the farm. I might have killed him already, I've already implied that this timeline's f***ed up. Maybe this video isn't even canon. Now before you see what I'm about to do to Joe Cobb, go watch my Euclid Z Finder only video to get a sense of what my frame of reference was. The original playthrough for the Z Finder was one hell of a letdown, but there was one other reason why I chose the Z Finder over the Alien Blaster. The damage from the Z Finder Blast isn't based on any skill. It goes up to 150 damage depending on where the target is. Normally, you only get to fire it once per day because the ammo only reloads once per day, but I don't have that limitation anymore. I'm still using bean background for every shot, and believe it or not, this thing worked almost flawlessly. The redemption arc is complete. After 131 episodes, Season 1 of Mitten Squad's Can You Beat ends right here at this specific moment in this video. Season 2 kicked off with me going underground. As the co-host of the popular YouTube star Mitten Squad, I know all about how dying media works. You end the first season on a high note, then pick up on a real slow note. I killed the ranger just like the mole people asked me to, bought all the medical supplies the Brotherhood of Steel had, and made good on a promise I made to an old friend. More of a wager, really. I bet Dead Sea that I couldn't kill each of the senior officers at Camp Forlorn Hope. They never stood a chance. Those under a thin layer of 200-year-old tent cloth were shielded from my heat ray. That's why I saved my fat man for emergencies. In about 5 hours for me, and about 19 minutes for you, I've gone from needing 80 bean bags to kill Ringo, to wiping out entire squads of NCR soldiers with a single bag, to running naked and crippled through the desert taking out lizards with an Archimedes II while using my body as bait. Nothing in the main story is a challenge for me anymore. To that end, I hoped that my sick hacky sack skills would make me a great bounty hunter. Clogging up the kill feed with pound puppies didn't do much for me. Quickly was a threat, kind of, but I needed more. I'm at level 11, and I'm wiping the floor with everything I'm willing to kill. Naturally, Lonesome Road, a DLC intended for couriers level 25 and up, is where I needed to go to get my whistle licked. To pass through the missile silo to get to Sesame Street, I required Eddie to be at my side and unlock doors. While he was dealing with the two sentry bots and being unconscious sometimes, I spent almost two dozen beanbags taking down a sentry bot to get to a control panel that unlocks the door to the Great Divide. It's a hellish place, even on International Don't Bully Paul Day. It sucks that nobody cares about my made-up holidays. When the game said it recommends you be a level 25 or higher, it meant it. Marked men scouts don't f around. They are accurate. Their bullets hurt a lot. They have some form of scar tissue based active camo that helps them blend into the destroyed buildings. And my sea finder is starting to show signs of wear and tear. Firing in quick succession seems to cause problems with the aiming. I can't throw the laser out as far as I used to when I was a younger man. And even sadder, it's developing separation anxiety and won't leave my side no matter how much it hurts me. It's still a space laser though, so the guys covered in markers could be killed in one or two shots. Red Glare is another powerful unique weapon that can be loaded with bean bags. It's a fat man with training wheels, not worth using over anything else. I didn't do much in the collapsed tunnel besides cry. The tunnelers are impervious to strong wind. Archimedes 2 doesn't reach underground. Eddie got turned into scrap metal. Nothing went well down. There? It got worse when I reached the surface. Death claws are all along the bridge, and these ain't your mama's death claws. If you manage to land both orbital strikes on one death claw, you might be able to kill it with two shots. The issue with this one in particular has nothing to do with it. It's all me. I chose not to heal until I fully needed to and after I died multiple times. One more guard at the entrance to the Ashton missile silo. Eddie, 
Poor Eddie. He got caught in the blast, so I dropped him into the nether. Kept moving, popped a blister, detonated a nuclear warhead, and hit the end of the line. My objective is to survive the train ride down into the heart of Tamriel. The train car gets ambushed by the tunnelers on the way down, and I've been getting by on scraps of cheese for a lifetime. I had a stealth boy a while back, but I used it for something so insignificant that I can't remember what it was. The fat man beanbag gun was in no way old enough to be killing anything, yet I pushed it to anyway. I gave one tunneler a new haircut, then tried to escape. There's no way off this train. The invisible walls are bullies and won't get out of my way. I did the only thing I could think of. I quick saved through the wall, got sucked beneath the escalator, and found myself in the universe's glove box. Here, the tunnelers cannot harm me. The door to me is beyond them. I didn't move a muscle to risk not falling through the floor. All I had to do was quick save back through wherever I am and assess the damage of the nukes I fired. I got stuck real bad. Quitting to the main menu did not save me. Dropping every worthless item I had in the phone booth didn't unstuck me. Eddie bravely coming to me when I called out for his help didn't move me, nor did knocking Eddie out and standing up on his body. Not even disabling collision and using the walkthrough walls command could set me free. It didn't matter. I'd seen enough. I became a god using nothing but beanbags. I don't know what else you want from me. I didn't beat Fall of New Vegas with only beanbag rounds. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.